Recently, the Ukrainian Defense Forces launched a successful attack on the Russians in Crimea. Preliminarily, the Russians lost an anti-aircraft missile system. This is the conclusion reached by experts from OSINT from the OSINT project. Kiba Boroshno, after studying satellite images of the strike site, OSINTers believe that the strike successfully destroyed either the S-300 or S-400 system. Visually, they are very similar and difficult to distinguish using satellite images. We analyzed synthetic aperture radar images. Sentinel for October the 13th and 24th of the area around the settlement of Rusakovka in Crimea. They show the movement of the S-300 stroke S-400 type air defense system. The satellite image after the strike shows the explosions of ATA CMS sub munitions as well as traces that remained after the destruction of air defense system elements, noted Cyber Boroshno. They were unable to assess the extent of damage to the Russian complex as the Russians promptly removed it from the impact site. It can only be stated that the SAM system left its combat position, ceasing operations in the area. Synthetic Aperture Radar is a technology for obtaining images using radar mounted on a satellite or aircraft. Unlike conventional photography, which relies on reflected sunlight, Synthetic Aperture Radar works by sending and receiving radio waves. It should be noted that the Ukrainian Defense Forces are systematically destroying Russia's air defense system in occupied Crimea. The Russian Armed Forces air defense systems on the peninsula are regularly hit. Recall in August, OSINT experts from the resource Kiva Boroshno confirmed the successful defeat of the Russian anti-aircraft missile system S-400 in the occupied Crimea. The destroyed installations were found on satellite images. According to OSINTERS, the system consisted of four 5P-8 5SM launchers and a 9-2N-6E radar system. Judging by satellite images, the Triumph was unable to defend itself from the attack. The image shows one 9-2N-6E radar, one probably damaged 5P-8 5SM launcher and one probably destroyed launcher on a tractor. The remaining two launchers are not seen in the image. They were most likely quickly pulled away, Cyber Boroshno reported. The General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine officially reported on the successful strike on the S-400 complex in Crimea on August the 3rd. According to its data, as a result of the missile strike, four Triumph launchers were destroyed. Russian servicemen have released a video showing that they are preparing to evacuate the bodies of their fellow soldiers killed in the battle. The invaders, who said that they were going to evacuate 10 dead bodies in total, revealed that they had to use an unusable passenger car for this. It seems that the Zigili car used by the Russian military has no doors and is dangerous to drive. Moreover, after the battle, the destroyed armored fighting equipment belonging to the Russian army can be seen in the area. Вот наша боевая тачка его. Аха, ебать. Вот двухсотый грузим. Сегодня десять собрали его. Всем привет. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday launched a massive exercise of the country's nuclear forces featuring practice missile launches as he continued to flex the country's nuclear muscle amid spiraling tensions with the West over Ukraine. Speaking in a video call with military leaders, Putin said that the drills will simulate top officials' action in using nuclear weapons and include practice launches of nuclear-capable ballistic and cruise missiles. Putin, who has repeatedly brandished the nuclear sword as he seeks to deter the West from ramping up support for Ukraine, emphasized on Tuesday that Russia's nuclear arsenal remains a reliable guarantor of the country's sovereignty and security. 
Taking into account growing geopolitical tensions and emerging new threats and risks, it's important for us to have modern strategic forces that are always ready for combat," he said, reaffirming that Russia sees nuclear weapons use as the ultimate, extreme measure of ensuring its security. Putin noted that Moscow will continue to modernize its nuclear forces, deploying new missiles that have a higher precision, quicker launch times and increased capabilities to overcome missile defenses. Last month, the Russian leader warned the US and NATO allies that allowing Ukraine to use Western-supplied longer-range weapons for strikes deep inside Russia would put NATO at war with his country. He reinforced the message by announcing a new version of the nuclear doctrine that considers a conventional attack on Russia by a non-nuclear nation that is supported by a nuclear power to be a joint attack on his country, a clear warning to the US and other allies of Kiev. Putin also declared the revised document envisages possible nuclear weapons use in case of a massive air attack, holding the door open to a potential nuclear response to any aerial assault, an ambiguity intended to deter the West. Today практическими пусками баллистических микролатых ракет. Сразу отмечу, что Россия подтверждает свою принципиальную позицию о том, что использование ядерного оружия является крайней исключительной мерой обеспечения безопасности государства. Вместе с тем, мы хорошо понимаем, что именно ядерная триада продолжает оставаться надежным гарантом суверенитета и безопасности нашей страны позволяет решать задачи стратегического сдерживания, а также поддерживать ядерный паритет и баланс сил в мире как объективные факторы глобальной стабильности. Учитывая рост геополитической напряженности, появление новых внешних угроз и рисков, важно иметь современные и постоянно готовые к боевому применению стратегические силы. Будем и дальше совершенствовать все их компоненты. Ресурсы для этого имеются. Подчеркну, мы не собираемся втягиваться в новую гонку вооружений, однако будем поддерживать ядерные силы на уровне необходимой достаточности. В текущем году их оснащенность современными образцами вооружения достигла порядка 94%. В соответствии с госпрограммой вооружения будем планомерно переводить РВСН на новые ракетные комплексы стационарного и мобильного базирования, которые по сравнению с предыдущими поколениями обладают более высокой точностью, сокращенным временем подготовки к пуску. И что крайне важно, повышенными возможностями по преодолению систем противоракетной обороны. Кроме того, продолжается ввод в состав военно-морского флота новейших атомных подводных крейсеров, а также модернизация стратегических бомбардировщиков дальней авиации. Все это необходимо для эффективной защиты России и нашей.